All right, so what is quantum lesser? Uh, let's fix a state phi and define a function from poly uh, to vectors. Define V of P to be P times to the state phi. Um, and when you define the function V this way, it'll satisfy uh, the constraints here. So if you inner product V of P and V of P, then it's one. If you inner product V of PQ and V of I, uh, so it's not one, it's it's same as V of P inner product V of Q. Uh, yeah, because polys are permission. And yeah, so, and, and the function is supported on exponentially big space. Now you can consider level K lesser where you restrict the polys to be length K. Um, you'll, you'll satisfy the both constraints, but now it's polysized. Okay, now we can write, we can relax our original quantum X cup problem into this list there. Uh, so write the objective function uh, using the vectors V of, v of I's, v, v of P's I just introduced. Um, and these will satisfy some constraints, but if you're thinking in level K, uh, the P's will be in length length K space. Uh, the P's will be length K. Um, but instead of considering actual um, the vectors I, I just defined, we could just see it as some vectors in a smaller space. So the dimension is polynomial. So yeah, in this paper, yeah, it's exactly a momentum matrix. All right, so um, another important factor that we use in this paper is monogamy of entanglement. Uh, it's a quantum phenomena um, and it gives a connection between quantum max cut and maximum matching. So consider this star graph, then the highest energy minus highest product state energy is always at most one half on star graph, regardless of the degree. Um, so for example, if you consider just single edge, uh, the highest, ener highest energy is one, but the highest product state energy is one half. So uh, it satisfy it saturates this inequalities actually. Uh, the energy is the objective function on single edge. One minus right, correct. Um, and also notice that matching on star graph is less than one. All right, so this is what I just said. And the key idea to connect uh, maximum matching and our problem is that if you add these inequalities over the whole graph, then highest energy minus highest product energy is at most maximum fractional matching divided by two on the whole graph. Uh, so the question is, can we incorporate somehow this maximum fract fractional matching into quantum Mexico. Um, okay, so maximum fractional matching and maximum matching are different, but uh, of the constant, you could use one to upper bound or lower bound the other. So let's just say they're similar for now. Uh, so, Naive idea could be find the maximum matching. Uh, so in this case would be yeah, integer matching 
assign optimal state, the single state on the match state, on the mat matched edge. Okay, this sounds good, but here's an, here are examples that doesn't work really well. So if it has high degree like this, uh, if you assign back, assign single state on single edge, then it forces the rest of the edges to have energy one quarter. On the other hand, if you have the best product state, so for example, if you have zero in the center and one on the leaves, then it has energy half on each edge. So if you add, then the product state has higher energy. All right, so here is a, here's our algorithm that's very simple and it actually works. So first find the product state with high energy. Second, find the state based on the maximum matching. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain later what it means to, what it means. Um, and between one and two, take the state with higher energy as the final answer. All right, so the first part uh, comes from one of the previous work, uh, the first work actually on this problem, Caribbean Park 19. So solve the level two lesser for, for our instance and round uh, some three dimensional version of Gomez Williamson So project a vector onto three-dimensional space instead of uh, instead of one-dimensional space and normalize it and use the final vector three-dimensional vector uh, to have a product state. And for the matching part, um, find the maximum integer matching. Uh, you can do this efficiently and get M, uh, get the matching, and assign a product of two qubit states, which is a single state on matched edge, matched edges and uh, un uniformly random state on unmatched qubits. All right. Um, okay. I, I guess I have some time to talk about analysis. <clears throat> so that that is the algorithm. Um, so we use the standard SDP relaxa relaxation algorithm, which is that at the end we want to prove that uh, the energy output by uh, the state the algorithm output has at least alpha times SDP energy. So SDP objective value, where alpha is some constant. <clears throat> okay, so because of this um, algorithm design, we'll have that the energy, the final energy is maximum of energy of the product state and energy of the matching state. And this is equal to maximum of uh, convex combination of energy of the product state and energy of matching. All right, so the rest is just calculating each term. Um, product state energy is given by some similar process to the uh, Gomez Williamson but now you need to do it in three dimensional uh, and that's done in Gerbian prac. And you get this hyperbolic function. And important thing is that you uh, write it in, in um, inner products of this um, concatenation of phi of xi, phi of yi and phi of zi. And 
and the matching state is simpler. So if it's if it's not matched, you get a quarter, and if it's matched, you get a you get energy one. So you can write in this way, and yeah, we can upper bound. Oh, sorry, we can lower bound the matching um, with STP value because of monogamy of entanglement. And finally, just uh, sum the two terms. And by taking the worst case of the VI dot product VJ, you can get rid of the summation over, over edges and you can just compute this closed form formula to get the ratio. Okay, so um, it's an open problem that I think is important, but um, our algorithm is classical, meaning that I give you this algorithm and say, um, our algorithm outputs a state with energy 55, uh, you can verify it with your classic computer. On the other end, a quantum optimization algorithm, uh, if when it, the energy can be verified by a classical algorithm, but it can be, it could be verified by a quantum computer. So we, uh, but we haven't found the quantum optimization problem, optimization algorithm yet. And yeah, as I said in the beginning, uh, quantum, quantum PCP would give a hardness to quantum approximation algorithm. Um, and ideally, we would like to find the best, the optimal algorithm like Gomez Williams. All right, thank you. Thanks for the great talk. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering about your perspective on what you think about the 0.595 value. Do you think that's actually very close to the optimal we could ever get? Or do you think like there could be a totally better way of, of rounding for this case? Uh, I mean, I think there'd be a constant difference, but I think uh, we're pretty off. I, I, that, that's my guess. Yeah, because yeah, we don't even have a quantum algorithm yet. I mean, uh, even for the practical. Oh. Practical yeah, I would still guess that there's. Do you have any specific no. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the. So, oops. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, thank you for the talk. I was going to ask. I might have missed this. What are you matching? I saw very quickly on the slide there was a definition. Um, but what is the max match oh here. so uh maximum matching on graph theory is uh given a graph with uh weight you want to find edges that doesn't overlap on a vertex that maximizes the weight okay so thank you for the talk indeed um, my question was about uh, um, if anyone has used tensor networks to solve this in practice so I would assume that if your graph is random, maybe tensor networks are a very good algorithm. Has anyone studied the, uh, this problem? I don't know, just try it out maybe. It sounds like a great idea, but I haven't heard of anyone trying that. Hi. So this area of quantum max cut, um, suppose that we get the best case scenario and we end up understanding you know, optimal approximation and whatever quantum algorithm for STP rounding, suppose like it all goes you know, as well as we could hope. My question is in the best case scenario, what do you think that would unlock in terms of understanding of quantum algorithms for um, 
relevant physical problems or right um that's a great question uh so maybe for that to uh maybe to answer that let's think about what's the uh, difficulties we have currently to design such algorithm, right? Um, I think the uh, biggest obstacle is that we don't even have a quantum primitive to for um, optimization algorithms. Like we don't have a quantum algorithm that you know outputs a state that has high energy. Maybe you know some local uh, maximum algorithm that came out recently, but yeah, other than that, I don't know. <laughs> 